Hey, Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe. In this week's episode, I'm gonna show you how to emulate a toy camera look inside of Photoshop. All right, this week's episode is gonna be a lot of fun. I'm gonna show you how to emulate a toy camera. Now, these were made popular by the Diana and then later the Holga. Uh, both of these cameras were made in Hong Kong. They were cheap little plastic cameras and they had certain characteristics that people really loved and in fact so much they had a cult following. So one of the things is the cheap plastic lens. I'm going to show you how to emulate that inside of Photoshop to get that kind of softness around the edges. I'm also going to show you how to copy those light leaks. So the seals weren't very good and a little bit of light would get in and contaminate the film and create kind of like little red splotches on the film. I'm also going to show you how to do that. So in late 2015, the Holger was discontinued. You can still find it in different camera shops and also there's a lot of uh, cheap Russian cameras that are very popular with the Lomo crowd as well. So anyway, let's jump into Photoshop and get this effect going. Now you can also follow along at Photoshop Cafe. I have the step-by-step -step written uh, tutorial for this as well as a link where you can find the original source file. And that link is underneath. So let's get started. So here's a rectangle image. You can work for rectangle if you like, but those original cameras had a square film format. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop this to a square. So let's go and grab the crop tool. Now, how do we make a perfect square? Well, if you go up at the top of the crop tool selected and you'll see where it says original ratio, we're going to go down. Now we don't want pixels. We're not actually choosing a size. We're choosing an aspect ratio. So we want a one to one, which is a square aspect ratio. So if we click on that, you're now going to see there's a square. So what we need to do now is we're going to move this picture over. Now, as we do it, notice the tops and bottoms get a little loose and we kind of want that to stay. So I'm going to hold the shift key and that'll constrain it. So I'm not going to have any white around the edges. And I'm just going to crop this how I want it. I'm going to put our model right here in the middle and that looks good. So now you can just hit the enter key or hit the check mark up here. But before you do, make sure the leak crop pixels is turned on. If this is turned off, our vignette later on is going to look weird. So we just want to apply this and now we've cropped it down. Okay, so let's go to the layers panel. This is where we're going to be doing the majority of our work. I'm just going to pull that up a little bit. Now, what we want to do is we want to add a little bit more density to this, because if you actually look at these type of photographs, they're quite dense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this just by going down there and releasing to duplicate that layer. Now to add the density, what I want to do is change the blend mode here and I'm going to go under normal. I'm going to change this. Normally I'll go to overlay, but in this case, I'm going to go down to multiply uh, because there's a lot of lights in this image and I want to kind of darken those down. All right. So there we go. We've got our effect. It's a little strong. So we're going to take our opacity. We're going to pull it back and then just bring it up a little bit, maybe to about there. We've got a nice bit of density there to our image. Now the next thing we're going to do is I want to add the blur to simulate the plastic lens. Now I want to apply this to both of these layers together. Now one of the things I could do is I could select these and I convert them to a smart object, which is, you know, by just right clicking, we can do that. And normally this is what I would do. But in this case, I'm not going to because I want to be able to show you the before and the after later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you another way. I'm just going to duplicate this background. And this is really just for showing later. And now I can select the two layers. So generally speaking, this would normally be the background. I would just right click now and now convert it to a smart object. There we go. So what we've got now is if I hide this background, you can see we've got both our layers put together and now we can apply the effect to both of them because I don't want to apply effect just to one layer. That's going to be weird. All right. So now we're going to go under filter. And actually, just let me mention here, you could merge those together if you're using CS6, because what I'm going to show you now will only work in CC. So if we go down here and then we go to the uh, gallery, going to the blur gallery, and we're now going to apply an iris blur. Now, the reason I um, did this as a smart object, I want to apply it to both of these, and that works in CC as a smart object. CS6 does not, so you would have to take those layers and merge them so you can apply this. All right. Just wanted to clarify that. All right, so what we want to do now is we're just going to add a bit of a blur. We don't want it too blurred, and we just want to kind of around the edges. So I can actually just pull up here. I can change the shape of that a little bit. You know, generally speaking, it should be circular if you want to be accurate, but I'm going to actually make it a little bit more square. And let me go around here. I'm just going to straighten that up. And let's just play around with the amount of blur here. 
So that's looking pretty good. And if we wanted to add some bokeh, we could. I'm not going to do that, though, because all I'm trying to do is blur the edges to simulate a poor quality lens effect. I'm just going to pull it back a little bit. So I don't want it too strong, just subtle. And then I'm just going to click OK. And this is now going to apply it. So if we look at this before, well, let's turn it on here. We can see before and after um, you see the multiply as well as a little bit of a blur. All right, great. That's a good step. Now, what we want to do is apply a little bit of a color cast to here. So I'm going to go down and under the adjustment layers here, I'm going to choose a solid color. Notice just that little yin yang thing there. And this pops up. So what I'm looking here, I'll just bring this up to the side. Is I'm on a color, it's kind of a green, maybe a little blue, but not aqua. Bring it back a little bit so it's still kind of green and then click OK. Now we want to apply just the color of this just to give it a color cast. So what we're going to do is change this from normal to color blend mode. And then what happens is now it only affects the color and nothing else. Now we're going to take the opacity very low. Let's bring it around to about 10%. So you can see before and after, just a very subtle effect. I just wanted to kind of create that little coloring effect there. All right, we're getting closer. So what we want to do now is I want to do a couple of little coloring things on here. So what we're going to do is we're going to select these layers here and we're just going to go down and so I'm going to select them all. And I'm going to right click and I put these inside a smart object again. So convert to a smart object. We're putting these together. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into camera raw and make these adjustments. If you're working in CS6 or earlier, what you need to do is save this file now as a TIFF, then go into bridge, right click and open in camera raw. If you're working in CC, we can do a layer in camera raw. So we're going to go up to filter, uh, camera raw filter. Now, honestly, I think being able to work with these layers as uh, camera raw is the biggest thing in CC. All right, so I'm just going to click here, camera raw filter. And now if you've opened this from bridge in CS6 or earlier, we're now going to pick it up. If you're in CC, keep following. So essentially everybody just follows along now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the coloring effect in here just a little bit more. I'm going to go into the curves here and what I want to do is just give it a, just a little bit more boost. I'm going to pull down the darks there just a little bit and then just kind of level out those lights. So what I'm doing is just um, plugging it up a little bit more, giving a little more contrast in the shadows, which further simulates the style of these uh, kind of cameras from the film. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just do a little coloring trick here. So I'm going to take the saturation i'm going to increase the saturation a little bit and now i'm going to take the vibrance and pull it down just to kind of balance it out and it's just kind of giving it an interesting color effect in fact that might be a little too colorful let's pull it back just a little more and pull that back all right that's looking great now if it is too dense for you you can go into the blacks and you can actually just pull the blacks up this way see that and that'll kind of open it up a little bit but i'm not i'm going to keep it quite dense here i like that effect now what we want to do is create our vignette. So we're going to go up under the effects tab. Then with our effects tab, we're going to take our vignette and we're going to just set it up. So we're going to take it all the way down first and we'll play around with this in a little bit. We'll set the proper amount. Now you've got highlight priority, color priority. I'm just going to keep it in highlight. So what we're going to do here is now we're going to change the hardness, which is the feather. I'm going to take it all the way and make it hard so we can see what we're doing. I want to make this one more square. So I'm going to take the roundness down. So we just kind of get those corners a little bit. See that? But I'd like to kind of bring it in a little bit. So that's where the midpoint comes in. So we're just going to go a little bit there. So we're creating a very thin vignette. Right now, it, this almost looks like a, you know, Polaroid frame or a, or a film frame kind of effect. So what we want to do now is just blend it in a little bit more. So what we're going to do is take the feather and we're just going to soften it off a little bit. So I, I kind of like that. And then maybe the opacity is just a little strong. So we just take the amount and we can pull the amount back to about there. And let's pull the midpoint back a little, just make it a little stronger. There we go. We've kind of made our vignette effect. All right. So we're pretty much done here now inside of camera raw. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click. OK, now, if you were working in uh, CS6 or earlier, just choose to open this in Photoshop and then you can continue. All right, so there we go. So let's see where we've gone so far. So there we are before 
and after you can see we're well on our way to our effect in fact a lot of people might just stop here and like this kind of coloring and this grading effect we've got here but what we want to do is we want to add our light leaks so i'm going to create a new layer now i'm just going to pop this layer on top and i'm just going to hit the i'm just going to scroll out a little bit so we can kind of see around the edges and then we're going to grab a brush so let's go to the brush tool the b key would do that or click on brush here we're going to go up there and make sure that the hardness is turned all the way down. We're going to use a soft brush. Okay, so I'm actually just going to use my Wacom pen here for this. So what we're just going to do here is we're going to tap here and we're going to choose red. Just a nice bright red there. Make sure you're on that new layer and you're set to normal, 100% opacity. And let's make that brush a little bigger. And all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to paint in here a little bit just following that down and what I'm doing is just kind of simulating the light leaks so the light leaks will kind of come in that one side maybe there's a little bit on the other side we can just kind of dot it in fact I won't do up there it's a little much just grab the edge a little bit there we go so there we go we just kind of grab those edges and and sometimes you know you, if you grab the edges it might look a little more natural I've kind of gone pretty strong here but that's okay I want to show you the effect so now we're going to change the blend mode. Now there's a couple of modes that will work. A lot of the time I like to use color and you can see the effect there. And uh, the other ones that might work sometimes too is soft light, uh, which looks kind of cool there. And if you want a stronger effect, you can go to hard light, which is you'd have to drop the opacity down if you're going to do that. I kind of like that soft light effect there. And, you know, I can still bring the opacity down a little bit if I like. So let's bring that one up to full size. And more or less, there we have our effect. I'm going to show you one more thing in a sec, though, so hang on. So here we go, before and after, that's our effect. Now I'm going to show you how to create a low contrast version. We're just going to go down here and add a curve adjustment. So this is a GIF variation. And I'm going to grab the properties and just pull this curve out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the black point, which is in the bottom left, and just pull that up a little bit. And I'm just kind of pulling the blacks out to make it look a little more faded so if you prefer this effect the softer effect it's right there and uh, you can bring the light leak up above that if you want it which which I would do so there we go so we've got our high contrast version there and we've got our low contrast version there I hope you enjoyed this week's episode it was a lot of fun making it now if you're not a subscriber to Photoshop cafe just click that subscribe button right now and it takes like half a second and then you'll become a subscriber and then you can get uh, a new tutorials whenever we put them out. Currently we're putting out a new tutorial every week and I'd love you to have it. So anyway, in the comments section, I'm really curious about a couple of things. I have a couple of questions for you. One, have you ever used a toy camera, Holga, um, Diana or any of the others, or maybe you still use it? I'd love to hear your experiences. Then the other thing, is this even necessary? Now that we have Instagram, which, you know, in one click, you can emulate this. Do we even need these effects? Do we even need these type of cameras anymore? And I have another question for you. Instagram, do you just upload your photos directly as you've edited them in Photoshop or you've taken them or do you apply the Instagram filters? You can also find our Instagram at Photoshop Cafe. And uh, if you like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends. And once again, hit that subscribe button. Until next time, I'll see you at the cafe. That's PhotoshopCafe.com.